A Touch of Greek, Out of Olympus, written by Tina Folsom, narrated by Eric G. Dove. Chapter 13 You want me to drive? Triton asked, shock pulsing through his system as Sophia steered him toward the driveway rather than the sidewalk in front of the house where he'd planned to hail a cab. He hadn't thought of this, because at the moment he wasn't capable of any coherent thought, let alone how to explain to Sophia that he didn't know how to drive a car. What Triton needed was a shower, a real cold one, together with a dose of advice on how to handle Sophia. On the one hand, she was cautious, just the way it could be expected in her interactions with a stranger. Yet while he'd dressed her, he'd seen glimpses of unbridled passion in her. He hadn't expected her to call him back to help her dress. When she finally dropped the robe without ceremony, he'd had to bite his own lips so the pain would distract him from his raging hard-on. In that instant, he'd thanked the gods that she was virtually blind, for he was sure he couldn't have hidden the lust in his gaze nor the massive bulge in his pants, just like he couldn't hide his panic now. The entire ruse would be uncovered now, She'd never believed that as a home health care worker he couldn't drive, when this was surely one of the requirements for the job. He had to come up with an excuse, and quick, before suspicion settled into her, and he'd have yet another obstacle to overcome. All Triton had ever driven was a chariot. He was also an expert sailor, but a car? Where would he have learned how to drive a car? He knew in theory how a car worked, knew there were gears, a brake, and a gas pedal, but how to actually operate one he'd never tried. He didn't understand mortal men's fascination with cars. Now a fast boat, that was something else entirely. Whenever Triton needed transportation on dry land, he'd either teleported right to where he'd needed to be, which was now impossible since Zeus had stripped him of his godly powers, or hired transportation. On occasion, he'd borrowed Hermes' winged sandals. Not that Hermes had called it borrowing, even though Triton had never had any intention of keeping those frilly things. They were unbecoming to a man, and how a grown god like Hermes could wear them day after day without flushing crimson in embarrassment was a mystery to him. You do drive, right? Sophia asked, sounding almost as panicked as he was. Male pride dictated his answer. Of course I drive, I just... His mind raced. Just forgot my driver's license upstairs in my room. Great, this bought him a few minutes. Why don't you wait in the car for me? He opened the passenger door of the beat-up truck parked in the wide driveway. She shook her head. That's not my car. Her hand pointed to the back toward the garage. That's my car. Triton's gaze locked onto the little red sports car parked under a protective canopy. He swallowed. The red convertible? A wicked smile curved around her lips. I like fast cars. Triton liked a fast chariot himself and an even faster woman. He whistled, full of appreciation, and helped her into the passenger seat of the sleek automobile. I'll be right back. He rushed back into the house. As soon as he was inside and certain nobody was around, he called out, Hermes, I need you. Get your butt down here. He caught a movement to his right and turned just in time to see the messenger of the gods slide down the banister and land squarely on his two feet, complete with winged sandals. Nonchalantly, Hermes leaned against the wood paneling in the hallway and crossed his arms in front of his chest. You could learn to be a little more polite when you call for me, especially considering that I'm a god and you're not. Triton balled his hands into fists, ready to deck his insolent friend. I am a god. Nothing would ever change that. Not right now, you're not. Granted, you're still mortal, but without your powers. Triton had his friend by the throat, lifting him up in the air so fast Hermes had no time to evade him. I might not have my powers, but guess what? I don't need them to trash your sorry ass. Nobody had the right to attack his currently fragile ego, much less make fun of him. He needed no reminder of what Zeus had done to him. His arms up in surrender, Hermes broke out in laughter. <laughs> Dionysus said you were a little testy right now, but boy, was that an understatement. Triton only grunted. His friend was right, he was a little on edge, but
but wasn't that to be expected? His whole future depended upon how he fared with Sophia, and being reminded that he didn't have his godly powers to help things along was just like offering a shiny new toy to a kid and then locking the store. Do you mind? Hermes asked, gesturing to be let down. Since you called me, I suppose you want something? I find I'm more motivated when not threatened. Triton released him. Hermes floated back onto his two feet, the winged sandals providing a soft landing, and rearranged his tunic. Looks like your mood rises and falls in direct proportion to your say it and you won't be able to raise a finger for a week, let alone a more prominent digit of your body, Triton warned. Stop transferring your anger onto me. We both know who you're really pissed at. Hermes mimicked shooting an arrow into thin air, grinning. Triton was in no mood to think about Eros. He was still seething about the love god's terrible advice. I'll handle that jerk when it's time. But right now, I need your sandals. No, not gonna happen. His friend's refusal was no surprise. You have no idea how to use them. You know I do, so hand them over. He stretched out his open palm. What's in it for me? Always one to make a trade, Hermes would eventually come around. Now all Triton had to give him was something good enough in exchange. What do you want? It was better to let his friend make a few suggestions before he'd make one of his own. There was no need to overpay for this favor. A blank IOU? Triton instantly shook his head. It'll be a cold day in Hades when I issue a blank IOU. I'm not desperate enough for that. I think you are. By the way, I had a look at the woman you're working on right now. Nice piece of ass. Firm tits, even without a bra. Was quite a sight when she stepped out of the shower this morning. Before Triton knew what he was doing, his fist connected with Hermes' face, snapping it backwards. You asshole, you spied on her? The god held his bloody nose. Hey, since when is looking an offense? You don't look at her, do you understand me? Triton hissed. His heart was pounding as his hand continued clenching and unclenching. How dare Hermes look at her naked? Nobody was allowed to look at her, but... Triton stopped his thought in its tracks. Seeing Sophia in her undergarments this morning had been arousing enough. The thought that Hermes had seen her without a stitch of clothing was unacceptable. He wouldn't allow this to happen again. From now on, he'd be around her constantly. Would he be able to sense a god who had cloaked himself from human eyes? Normally, yes, but without his godly powers, Triton wasn't sure he could. This put him at a disadvantage. Nevertheless, he had to protect Sophia from prying eyes. I think you'd better leave, he advised Hermes in a calm voice, before I forget that we're friends. You've turned into such a spoil sport, Hermes complained, and in a puff he was gone. This is not a game, Triton mumbled under his breath. He would just have to wing it. Otherwise, his cover would be blown. How hard could it be to drive a car? Maybe it wasn't all that different from a boat. Sophia enjoyed the rays of the sun on her face while she waited for Triton to return. It was nice not to be confined to a hospital room anymore. When she heard the footsteps on the gravel, she knew Triton was back. Her heart instantly beat faster, and she took a few extra breaths to calm herself. It was completely ridiculous how she reacted to him. Sorry it took so long, he apologized and got into the driver's seat. Did you find your license? She asked in order to make conversation. Sure. So let's, uh, start this baby up. Sophia gave a soft chuckle. He was just like any other man when it came to sports cars. A moment later, her breath caught in her throat when she felt his hand on hers. Was he making a pass at her? The key? he asked, leaning toward her. Oh, sure, yes, of course. Sophia pulled her hand out from underneath his and fumbled in her handbag. Her hand shook with the after-effects of her incorrect assumption. Why would she be thinking that he'd be making a pass at her? Like she was some great catch right now. No man would want to saddle himself with her, not in her current state. With a nervous laugh, she pulled her keychain out of her bag and handed it to Triton. His fingers brushed against hers in the process. Sophia pulled her hand away and dropped it in her lap. 
feeling as if an electric charge had just gone through her body. When the sound of the car engine hummed, she tried to relax back into her seat, but was jerked forward as the car lurched a few feet forward before the engine stuttered and died. What in Hades? Triton cursed. You were in gear, she noted dryly. What? His confusion was apparent. Sophia pointed at the gear stick. Stick shift. Oh, I, uh, he stammered. Then she suddenly realized something. I'm sorry, you're probably used to driving an automatic, right? I guess I just assumed with you being from Europe, you'd be used to driving a stick shift. Yes, yes, that's right. I learned driving in America, so I'm used to automatics. That's what it is. But how hard can it be, right? Shall we try it again? There was a definite smile in Triton's voice, she thought. At least he wasn't one of those men who felt embarrassed about his ineptness when it came to cars. Most guys would get bent out of shape if a woman ever caught on to how badly they drove. Do you mind if I quickly show you the gears and explain it? I'm rather attached to my car, Sophia said. She hoped he wasn't the kind of guy who didn't like to get directions from a woman. Go ahead, he offered. She put her left hand onto the gear stick. Place your foot on the left pedal. That's the clutch. Press it all the way down and hold it there. Done, he confirmed. Then you can move from one gear to the next, and once you're in gear, you'll slowly let go of the clutch and press down the gas pedal. She shifted with her left hand. Like this? He asked and placed his hand over hers. She hadn't expected his touch, and the renewed contact with his warm skin sent her pulse racing. A slow tremble started in her belly and threatened to burst to the surface. Sophia swallowed hard before she answered. Yes, first gear is here, second, then third and fourth. See the pattern on the knob? She shifted with his hand, clasping hers. You won't need the fifth in the city. Triton chuckled. <laughs> we'll see about that. How about I tease everything out of this car that it's got? I should warn you that I have a talent for wringing the last drop of excitement and passion out of anything and anybody. A shiver raced down Sophia's spine. God help her if he did. Ready? he asked. Was she ever? Yes, we'd better leave. I don't want to be late. She tried her most professional voice to hide her nervousness. Triton let go of the stick shift and her hand and started the engine again. She dropped her hand back in her lap. I think you should help me shift, he suddenly said, just for the first couple of blocks until I get the hang of it. Without waiting for her answer, he took her hand and placed it back onto the gear stick, encasing it with his own much larger one. First gear? he asked. Sophia felt a light pressure from his hand and followed it to put the stick into first. Mm-hmm, she mumbled, her throat too dry to speak a coherent word. This ride would be her undoing. After two blocks, Triton was shifting like a pro, and she tried to pull her hand away, but he stopped her. I'm still learning, he claimed when she knew he'd already mastered the task. While at first his shifting was slightly jerky, by the time he pulled up in front of the bank, she couldn't tell that this was the first time he'd driven a stick shift. Maybe men were born to drive cars. Sophia remembered that it had taken her almost two weeks to get used to the stick shift after she'd traded Elaney's station wagon in for the used sports car. Or maybe Triton was just a natural with cars. And maybe with other things, too. <laughs>